Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us all the way back to 1936 for a 20th Century Fox production, Charlie Chan at the Racetrack. This is the 12th Charlie Chan movie in the 44 film series, begun by Fox Films in 1931 and then continued by 20th Century Fox after Fox Films emerged with 20th Century Pictures and finally concluded by Monogram Pictures in 1949. 44 Charlie Chan movies in 28 years. No other B-movie series comes close to that record of success. Tonight, Charlie Chan is played by Warner Rowland. He was born in Sweden in 1879 and came to America with his parents when he was just 13 years old. In his early 20s, Olin translated the plays of Swedish playwright August Strindberg into English, and his translation was the definitive translation of Strindberg's plays for the next 50 years. In 1931, Warner Olin was selected to play Charlie Chan for the movie Charlie Chan Carries On. That was the first of the Charlie Chan movies, and that was a big hit, and it launched the series of those 44 movies over the next 28 years. They were so successful that they kept Char the Charlie Chan movies kept Fox solvent during the Depression. Warner Olin was paid $60,000 per film, an enormous sum for actors of the day. Even major stars like Clark Gable weren't paid that much money for a movie. But Warner Olin was an alcoholic, and it destroyed his health and then his marriage. When his wife left him, he fell into a depression. And during the filming of Charlie Chan at Ringside, he walked off the set and never worked again. He returned to his native Sweden, where he died a broken man in 1938 at the age of only 58 years old. Well, 20th Century Fox salvaged that movie, Charlie Chan at Ringside. They retooled it into a Mr. Moto movie, and they began to search for the next Charlie Chan. They selected Sidney Toller to play the new Charlie Chan, and he turned out to be equally successful in the role. In tonight's movie, a stable owner dies when a horse race, racehorse kicks him to death. At least that's what it looks like, but Charlie Chan suspects murder. Let's return to 1936 and enjoy Charlie Chan at the racetrack. Records indicate most murders result from violence. And murder without bloodstains, like uh, Amos without Andy, <laughs> most unusual. <laughs> Therefore, study of bloodstain evidence most helpful in reconstruction of crime. We'll demonstrate with eyedropper. Number one, drop of blood Falling in straight line from short distance, make round spot, so. Number two, falling from greater distance, exhibit sunburst effect. But observe, drop of blood thrown forward as from knife held in hand, make entirely different mark. Hey, fellas, 
I got the inside dope. Put your shirt on Avalanche's nose. Holy mackerel, we forgot the Melbourne sweepstakes. Turn on the radio. Excuse us, Charlie. This is more important than murder. But gee, Pop. Sign on door say, please knock. Did I interrupt something? Train of thought now need wrecking crew. Gee, Pop, I'm sorry, but this is a hot tip. Hot tip does not explain mystery of shirt on nose of avalanche. Avalanche is a horse running in a sweepstakes. What the kid means is to plank a donor and axe, that's over. All very clear. Thank you so much. Hey, any of you fellas gonna bet? I've only got about three minutes to get to the bookies. I'll take a chance. Ten smackers. Count me in for five. Hey, Mac, you owe me two bits and owe you a dollar. Want to get in the gravy, Pop? Smart fly, keep out of gravy. Ah, oh, but Pop, you ought to been on avalanche for old time's sake. Correction, please. Horse, complete stranger. But the horse's owner isn't. He's your friend, Major Kent. Major Kent? We'll become reckless gambler for sake of old friend. We'll bet tail of shirt 50 cents on uh, Schnazzalola. <laughs> At a point, Pop. Here they are. Gathered to witness the greatest sporting event of the Australian turf, the Melbourne Cup. There goes the bugle calling the aristocracy of turf drum onto the field. Now the Sir Record one, the interest has never been equal during all the years in which the cup has been this country's greatest race. For one gunsmith, two flying Scotsmen, three stardust, four avalanche. The great Australian four-year-old with Tip Collins in the saddle. And owned by Mr. George Chester, the internationally known sportsman from the USA. Well, there's justice for you. Your father gives four of the best years of his life to raising that animal, and I grab all the honor. Do you regret your generous impulse, Major? Oh, I wasn't as generous as I was clever. This way, I keep everything in the family. <laughs> Truthfully, George, did you marry me for myself alone or for Dad's horse? Why, for the horse, of course. Spoken like a gentleman. As a friend, I'd advise you to do something about that. What can I do? Divorce and marry me. What? Another racing man? No, thank you. <laughs> Dad, I barely got a vet down on time. Did you get the rest of my money placed, Bruce? Yes, sir. Just before the odds fell again. Good work. Will that be all, sir? That'll be all until I collect. <laughs> <laughs> if you collect, you seem pretty confident. I am confident. <laughs> Still think your husband's entry will win, Mrs. Chester? I bet you a hundred he will. I'll take that bet. How about another thousand, Denny? I'll take that one, too. The horses are reaching the starting gate. Gunsmith has the rail. Hello, hello, hello. One of them's cutting up out there. Are they off? It's Avalanche. He's certainly living up to his reputation as a bad actor. Hold on there. He nearly threw his rider. Hey, Avalanche, cut it out. And it looks as if he'll be off to a bad start. Goodbye, shirt tail. Now they're getting in line. Avalanche is quieted down, and it looks like a start. It is a start, and they're off. It's a beautiful start. through that race. Have that jockey report to the office. Shirt tail now, bobtail. Well, anyway, Pop, we were on the best horse. The cards were just against us, that's all. When player cannot see man who deal cards, much wiser to stay out of game. And when he took the lead, why he fought for the rail. Avalanche does it almost every time. You trained the horse, Bagley. What about it? Well, he has a slight pull to the left, but Colin should have been able to handle him. It wasn't my fault, I tell you. Avalanche is good enough to win on his own. You fouled Stardust and you did it purposely. Why? Who paid you to do it? Nobody paid me. Never mind, Major. That's enough now. I didn't show the race. I wouldn't do a thing like that. You're suspended from further racing for two years. I'm sorry, gentlemen, and this is no reflection on you, Mr. Chester. We have no alternative but to disqualify Avalanche. Well, of all the feather-brained fools I ever saw, you're it. A blind man could have seen you pull that foul. Well, you said to foul him and I did. I told you to make it look like an accident. Here are your tickets on Stardust. 
Hey, what is this? I thought my cut was going to be five grand. This stuff has to be split too many ways. Well, that's just fine, isn't it? For a measly two grand, I get ruled off the track and you stay here and stuff your own pockets. I'm only following instructions. You'll be taken care of. I'd better be. You will now. Get out of here and lay low. There's a big gambling ring back of this, I tell you, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Major, there's nothing we can do about it. I lost, that's all there is to it. There'll be other races this year. Avalanche will clean up a fortune. It's more than just a question of money. We're taking our horse to America for the first time. How do you think this scandal will reflect on us personally? We've got to clear it up. Bruce. Yes, sir? Bruce? Cable Charlie Chan. Dad, please don't get mixed up in this. We're already mixed up in it. Cable Mr. Chan all the details of what's happened and have him meet our boat when we dock at Honolulu. Yes, sir. Better luck next time, Bagley. Oh, thanks. Of course, you may be right about the gambling ring, but I've been racing horses long enough to know something about these things. I wouldn't press an investigation if I were you. Fenton's right, Major. You're playing with dynamite when you start mucking with those fellows. I couldn't expect a professional gambler to be in sympathy with my stand. George, don't let him start anything. He might make a bad situation now, worse. Now, you know your father. Tomorrow we'll all be on the boat sailing for America. He'll have plenty of time to cool off. circumstance. I don't think there's anything odd about it, Charlie. It's just unfortunate that your friend met with this accident. I had cable from Major Kent asking me to investigate gambling ring. Accident seem most convenient. Charlie, you have a very suspicious mind. Suspicion often father of truth. Well, at any rate, it's in your lap. The Oceanic will be docking in a few minutes. You better go down there and see what you can find out. Sorry about your friend, Charlie. Thank you so much. Who is it? Stuart, sir. Were you going ashore, sir? No. You've been cooped up here for ten days, sir. You really should go ashore. It'll tone you up. I'm all right. Maybe you'd like to see the doctor, sir. I'll get him for you. I don't want a doctor. If I do, I'll send for him. Right you are, sir. Marks of violence quite evident, doctor. The hoof prints are deeply indented in the skull. The body is still aboard if you wish to examine it. All in proper time. So sorry. Not necessary for ladies to remain. You and Alice go to the cabin. Hmm? I'll join you later. Please, can't we get this over with? You were uh, Major's secretary? I was, yes. I'm with Mr. Chester now. <laughs> Excuse, please. Uh, sometime memory very bad. Who you say fine body? I said it was Mr. Fenton's staple boy. Thank you so much. You also have a horse on boat? Yes, I'm taking back a new string of horses I bought in Australia. You intend racing the same? Yes, but I don't see what that has to do with it. <laughs> you say you talk with Major ten minutes before death? Your memory's improving, Mr. Chan. Thank you so much. Can't we end this? Dr. Johnson has made a thorough examination and said it was an accident. This unnecessary questioning is idiotic. Easy to criticize. More difficult to be correct. We'll now inspect stall if I major meet death. Permission, please? Certainly, Mr. Chan. Very strange. Avalanche no major four years, yet kick him to death. Well, he has a bad temper. Huh. Friendly now. You wanted to see my stable boy, didn't you? Please. <laughs> Streamline. 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 Hey, you old lollipop. What you all doing? 
Streamline, where are you? Here I is, Mr. Finn. Come along here. Yeah, sir. Look at that. Look at you. Now you all stay up there where you belong and mask out with gallant lad. Yes, sir. This gentleman wants to ask you a few questions about the accidents. He's a detective. Is you a cop? My, oh, my. You remember position of body in stall? That is what I'm trying to forget. This is stall where honorable major meet death? Oh, no, sir. It happened over yonder. Yes, after the accident, we moved Avalanche to another stall. Please. <laughs> Where is Mr. Streamline? Mm, yeah, sir. Here yeah, I am. Where was Bobby? Bobby? Back down again, the wall lying on his face. Uh, will uh, kindly take same position on floor? I was just... Who, me? So do as he says now. Would greatly appreciate cooperation. Me on floor? Can I fix him up a bag of straw or something, Mr. Fenton? Do as he tells you. Yes, sir. Something's going to happen to me, I know. Ain't no good come playing dead on the floor. Thank you so much. Please to stay. Yes, sir. A horse and stall always face forward like others? Yes. Narrow width. Make him possible to turn round? That's rather obvious, isn't it? then Avalanche could only kick backward. That's the way a horse always kicks. Thank you. Something very strange here. You mean me? Oh, what's strange, Mr. Chan? Animal kick backward. Body lie there. Yet bloodstains found here. Observe, please. Uh, shaped like exclamation marks lying down. The pointed ends toward rear of stall. Is there anything unusual about that? Yes. Very poor attempt at deception. Uh, may I borrow a fountain pen? Certainly. Thank you. We'll now demonstrate only manner in which blood stains could have been made. Note similarity. And uh, what does that get you, Mr. Chan? Idea that maybe someone stand here. And while Major Pet Avalanche, murderer crush skull with heavy weapon, then drag body to back of stall to put blame on noble animal. Well, this is fantastic and absurd. It was blood on the horse's hoofs, and my examination indicated the man was... Well, let's have a Haven't I told you to keep that monkey away from Avalanche? It's all right, George. I'll give instructions that he be kept tied up for the rest of the voyage. I'm sorry about this interruption, Mr. Chan, but you see, Lollipop was brought up with Gallant Lad. And when I bought the horse, well, I had to take the monkey, too. Perhaps he senses our rivalry, George. There's your answer. That's what happened. Major Kent was in the stall, and the monkey frightened Avalanche, and he kicked the Major to death before he could get out. Very excellent analysis. Why, the whole thing is preposterous. I can't have my ship held here for investigation. That runs into thousands of dollars. Charlie is usually right when he has a hunch. Uh, have more than hunch. Now look here, Mr. Chan. Excuse, please. <laughs> it took liberty of borrowing small piece from boat. <laughs> well, what's that? Why, oh, it's a part of the clutch control of a winch. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, twin or one missing from cargo deck outside hostels. Observe. Shape identical with horseshoe blows which crushed skull of Major Kent. Very excellent proof of murder. That means the investigation will have to continue, Captain. But can Mr. Chang go with us instead of holding the ship here? What about it, Charlie? Do you want a sea voyage? Sea voyage, good for health. <laughs> uh, boat sail at six. Your cabin will be ready. I'll pack our bags before you can say Jack Robinson, Pop. Uh, correction, please. You pack my bag. You stay home with Jack Robinson. <laughs> oh, gee, Pop. <laughs> Hello, uh, and good luck. Thank you so much. See you later. Here you are, Mr. Chan. 212, B-Deck. Thank you, sir. Yes, Father. Hello, Mr. Chan. Well, Mr. Chan, we've been looking for you. I'm afraid we've treated you rather badly this afternoon. I, I owe you an apology, sir. All forgotten. Like last year's bird's nest. <laughs> <laughs> Does it occur to you that the guilty person may have left the ship? Uh, check on passengers at gangplank. Reveal everyone present. Well... The idea that the first person we bump into may be the murderer sort of gives a fellow the creeps. <laughs> What'll be your next move, Mr. Chan? Make effort to catch murderer. Will you, sir? Well, you pardon me. Listen to this. Don't enter Avalanche in the Santa Juanita handicap. A dead horse can't win a race. Yeah, I see that. Where'd you get this, Bruce? What? Oh, at the, at the desk. The time of delivery is stamped on back of envelope? Yes, it seems to be blurred. Four minutes past six. That's only ten minutes ago. <laughs> May I examine, please? Well, first they get the Major, now they're trying to scare me off. Look here, George. Whoever wrote this means business. An avalanche is too fine a horse to lose through your stubbornness. I'll give you 20,000 for him and retire him for a year to my breeding farm. No, this convinces me that the Major was right. I'm going to see it through to the finish. I'll talk to Captain Blake and insist on an extra guard below. A most excellent precaution. Oh, so sorry. May I have a letter, please? Certainly. Thank you so much. Gee, Pop, how'd you know it was me? Frequent spanking when young make rear view very familiar. Why are you here? Well, after you left, Mom decided to take the kids to visit Aunt Ling at the other end of the island, and I thought that... Uh, you make suggestion about visit? I, I sort of mentioned it, but... Uh... Uh, cabin boy outfit disguise? Oh, no, Pop, this is on the level. I signed for the trip. Now, look, Pop, if a gambling ring's back at this, it's dangerous. And, well, gee, I'd feel terrible if anything happened to you and I wasn't allowed to protect you. Confucius say, no man is poor who have worthy son. Thank you so much. Then you'll let me help? Examine, please. <whistles> say! The top edge is uneven, like it had been cut off with scissors. Yes. Writer, take precaution to eliminate oceanic trademark, but forget watermark in paper. They're the same, all right. Then whoever wrote this is on the boat. And look, Pop, the E's are clogged up, and the R's a little above the line. That means if we can find the machine this was written on, we'll have our man. Why, it's a cinch. I can search all the cabins. One moment, please. Search only in pursuit of duty as cabin boy. 
must remember obligation to ship. Okay, Pop. I'll clean up every room on the boat if I have to. One thing more. As a humble cabin boy, must forget okay, Pop. Okay, Pop. I'll never get anywhere as a secretary. I'm going to bet every dollar I have in the world on Avalanche. And we'll get married and... Bruce, please. That isn't the kind of marriage I want. I'd always hoped the man I'd marry would stay away from racing and betting. Well, Alice, I never thought that you... Don't you see, darling? That's the sort of thing I've had all my life. Then I never had a real home. It was always just one track after another. But the thrill of racing, the gamble, and then winning. And losing. We never felt sure of anything. One minute Dad would be on top of the world, and the next we'd have to borrow money to pay the feed bill. Bruce, dear, I'd hate to go through that with you. All right, dear. Santa Juanita will be the last time. I promise. Beg pardon, sir. The gentleman in 219 wishes to see you. Oh, uh, thanks. Excuse me, darling. I'll see you in the lounge. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, 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 not so fast. You're a new boy, aren't you? New now, very soon old. Ah, smart, eh? You don't belong up here. And what were you doing in that cabin? Flynn is down still. Think very smart will cut. By and by, catch him more money. Yeah? You'll catch more money if I find you up here again. Now, scat. Scat, tap, tap. Here. Oh, oh, excuse, please. Write letter to girlfriend. You're gonna have to write your letter somewhere else. It's so sorry you met. Clean up now, top top. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry. So Sally. No, oh, so it's you. I thought I told you to stay off this deck. Oh, tell him I'm with bottom side, Pop. I'm awfully sorry, sir. Did I hurt you? Stoop to pick up pin. Bring good luck. Good luck to that moon-faced cabin boy. He's a very suspicious character, he is. Yes. And as soon as I get my hands on him, into the brig he goes. Did you notice which way you went, sir? Uh, make haste the exit to north. Right you are, sir. I'll get him. Pop. I found the typewriter, all right. It belongs to Mr. Fenton. See? The letters are exactly the same. Most excellent progress. Well, I guess that's that. All we've got to do now is arrest him. Hasty conclusion, like toy balloon. Easy blow up, easy pop. Don't you think Fenton did it? You find way to typing machine. Maybe someone else do same. Gee, I never thought of that. Well, what you gonna do now, Pop? Surprise attack. Often find enemy unprepared. That extra guard ought to be on duty by now. I'll step down to the stalls and check up. I wish you wouldn't. Now, dear, will you please stop worrying? I've done nothing but worry, George, ever since you received that note. I told you not to say anything about it. I know, I know. You stay here with Warren. I'll be gone only a few minutes. Can't you persuade him to sell Avalanche to you? Mm, try and make him do it. Any progress? Long road, sometimes shortest way to end of journey. Uh, may I borrow a cigarette, please? Yes, certainly. This wasn't in my pocket when we left the dining room. It's another one of those notes. A dead horse isn't worth $20,000. What does it all mean? It means that someone knows an awful lot about our business. Uh, may he? Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll make immediate investigation. 
Did you notice the way he looked at me? Do you think he could have put that in your pocket? No, he wasn't within a yard of me. Best place for you is in your stateroom. I'm going down the stalls and see George right away. Left at the post. <laughs> Bruce will be back in a minute. Alone at last. Now, Denny, don't tell me I'm the only girl you ever loved. If Bruce doesn't marry you pretty soon, I will tell you. What's holding things up anyway? Money. He's so noble. He absolutely insists upon waiting until he can support me in the manner to which I've been accustomed. Very foolish young man. You mean Bruce? Uh, foolish to seek fortune when uh, real treasure hiding on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> will you tell him that for me? We'll be most happy. And to show you I'm not the kind to let a pal down, you tell Bruce to consult me hereafter before he bets on a horse. <laughs> oh, uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Chan? Thank you so much. Uh, the same in these, and make mine scotch. Yes. What will you have? Uh, sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla, sir, please. Very good, sir. That's dissipation for you. <laughs> You are lucky at uh, horse betting? I'll say he is. With all the odds against him, he bet on Stardust at the Melbourne Cup. I have good hunches sometimes. Play hunch on Stardust? I suppose you could call it that. Look, Mr. Chan, just as I was coming up the stairs, this fell at my feet. It's dangerous to know too much about other people's business. Bruce! I don't get the jitters. That sounds like the one George received. When you see note to Mr. Chester, Bruce, tell me about it. Well, what do you make of it, Mr. Chan? Make conclusion, you talk too much. Well, this is for you, Mr. Bowden. Hmm? How it came to be on my tray, I don't know. It was not there when I left the bar. Well, I got one, too. They certainly aren't playing any favorites. A smart gambler knows a dead horse can't win. Very interesting. May I keep, please? We'll make immediate investigation. I'd like to do a little investigating on my own hook, if you don't mind. Cooperation greatly appreciated. Excuse, please. Well, hello, Mr. Chan. Well, this seems to be for me. Yes. Withdraw avalanche from the Santa Juanita handicap. This is your last warning. Your secretary and Mr. Barton also receive mysterious notes. What? Uh, Writers seem very generous with threats. Well, is that all you've got to say? Why don't you do something about it? Uh, rabbit run very fast, but sometimes turtle win race. Well, they're after you too. What does it say? Most distressing. Must give immediate attention. Excuse, please. Come back here, you! Stewart nearly grabbed me, dropping that last note to Mr. Chester. <laughs> Congratulations for most expert delivery of mysterious letters. Just keen work, all right? Did you find anything? Experiment result in most interesting discovery. Travel in the forward hole! The forward stalls. That's where Avalanche is. Come on, Pop. One moment, please. You remain here. <laughs> I 
I'm sure I don't know, but it's under control. It's okay. It's a lucky thing the fire was discovered in time. They must be very desperate to endanger an entire ship just to carry out a threat against a horse. A contradiction, please. Person who start fire intend no harm to noble animal. How do you figure that out? A fire made directly under automatic apparatus. So heat will set off alarm more quickly before much damage. Their way of letting me know that they could have killed Avalanche if they'd wanted to. Where was the extra guard when this happened? He was on duty. May uh, question him? Smithers! Yes, sir. You were where when alarm sounded? On the cargo deck, sir. You had instructions to stay in here. Why did you leave? One of the booms was squeaking, sir, and made Avalanche nervous. When Mr. Chester came down, he spoke to Mr. Bagley about it, and he told me to fix it. That's right. Smithers. You also on cargo deck? No, after Mr. Chester left, I went to my room. How long there before alarm? About 10 minutes, maybe 15. I don't know exactly. Horses alone then? No, the Streamline was here. I told him to keep an eye on them till Smithers got back. Uh, Mr. Streamline? Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. You were present when alarm sounded? Yeah, sir, but, but I was asleep, sir. You see, sir, I took me a drink of gin for the misery in my feet, and naturally I go to sleep when I take a drink of gin. I ought to discharge you. Next move may be more than warning. Extreme precaution now necessary. You're absolutely right. From now on, you sleep here, Bagley, you understand? That's a good idea, I guess. You have your gun with you, haven't you? No, it's in my room. Well, what good is it doing there? Well, I thought with all this going on, that something might happen, so I was cleaning it. It's on my table, Streamline. Get it for me, will you? It ain't loaded, is it? Of course not. Then bring the cartridges. Yes, sir. Excuse, please. What did you find, Mr. Chan? Ghost of matches. Here's the gun and bullets, Mr. Chester. If you ever take another drink on duty, you're... What happened? Mr. Chan! What happened? Captain? Get it off. Hurry. Yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Chan. I don't know what to say. <sighs> Happy bullet in leg rather than heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> I thought you were cleaning the gun. You said it wasn't loaded. It wasn't when I left my room. Ten minutes so far. Hmm. You got your gun, Pop? Make excellent bedfellow. <laughs> May enter. Hello. I hear you ran into a bullet. Contradiction, please. Bullet ran into me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Really, I am. Same for the reason for a visit? And to return the mysterious little note that you sent me? <laughs> Clever idea, Mr. Chan. My compliments. A pleasure to return compliment. A clever deduction. Good. And now that you've admitted my ability as a detective, why not let me in on the secret? Whom did you expect to catch? Maybe you have answer? I wish I had. I like the old Major a great deal. <laughs> well, if I can be of any service, just uh, give me a buzz. Thank you so much. Do you think he did a pop? Ocean have many fish. There it goes. Men who set fire have uh, 12 minutes to cover trail. That's right. Now look, Pop. Bagley said he was in his room 10 minutes when he heard the alarm. He could have done it. And so could Mr. Chester. Because he was there while the guard was outside. But wait a minute. It might have been that secretary of his, too. 
because when I dropped his note, he was coming up from the cargo deck. You know, I still think that Fenton's the guy we want. I could have sworn someone was at that window. Lee, come back. Gee, Pop, what are you always stopping me for? Why don't you give me a chance to clean this case up for you? Foolish rooster, who stick head in lawnmower, end in stew. But just look at you, laid up here for the rest of the trip with a bullet in your leg. I'm not gonna let them get away with that. I'm gonna find the guy that loaded that gun. Oh. So it's you, eh? What's he doing here, sir? Is he annoying you? Very desperate character. But gee, Pop! What did you say? Confined to brig, please. Eagle eye for rest of voyage, bring reward. Right you are, sir. I'll stick to him like scotch glue. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chester. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Chan. Hello, Mr. Chester. Hello, boy. How are you? Feeling pretty fine, sir. My leg's almost as good as new. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Say, I'm sorry you lost that race in Melbourne. I bet it never would have happened if I'd been riding him. <laughs> That's all part of the game, boy. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Eddie Brill, the boy that used to ride for me before I left America. This is Mr. Chan. Oh, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Chan. So pleased. What about these threats you received in the boat, Mr. Chester? Avalanche will be under guard day and night, and no one else will be allowed near it. And I promise you that he will run in the handicap, don't you, boy? All right. Take him out the trailer, Bagley. How about you, Mr. Fenton? Any of those new horses you bought over there show any promise? Yes. Gallant lad. I plan on entering him in the handicap. Well, what do you think of his chances? <laughs> Until the winner crosses the finish line, it's anybody's money. Isn't that right, Chester? That's what makes horse racing. <laughs> Hurry up, get him out of there. Yeah, do <laughs> hey, You're the thickest fool I ever seen. Why don't you let your friend get a lad no more? Come on, get going. Get out of here. Something very strange. What, Pop? Before fire, monkey dislike avalanche. Now, dislike gallant lad. Say, that is funny. Not if horses switched. By golly, I bet that's it. They could get away with it, too. The horses look enough alike, and they're the same build. What you gonna do? Go to hotel, take nap. Hiya, Bagley. I thought you were in Australia. Yeah, I know you did. What's a new racket? I don't know what you mean. That horse you just put in the trailer in Avalanche? That's Gallant Lad. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah? You can fool Chester, he's half blind anyway. But I ain't. That fire was started on a boat to cover the switch. Not so loud. What's the idea of putting an unknown Palookan avalanche's place? I can't answer that here. Okay, where? Come along with me. We couldn't make a dime betting on avalanche. He's the favorite. The best we could get is even money. Sure, and nobody's seen avalanche in America. On the boat, the switch is made. And now avalanche in disguise goes to the post a horse no one ever heard of. Comes in a long shot with big odds. Catch on? And we're plastering the country with best from coast to coast to 20 to 1, and we clean up. Boy, that's swell. You guys can figure me in on that dough. Ah, you're already in. Well, boys, we've got a lot of work to do. Lefty, take Collins and get him planted somewhere where he can hide out and get a good rest. Oh, sure. I know just the spot. Have a drink? Never touch it. Need any money? Well, yeah, I could use some. 
I took almost all I had getting away from Melbourne. Uh, here's a couple of hundred for you. Thanks, Bagley. I guess I had you figured all wrong. Uh, that's all right. Let's go, Colin. So long, fellas. Goodbye, Collins. Uh, observe anything unusual during night? Not a thing. There's no one around this track who doesn't belong here. Avalanche has guarded so closely, no one could get within a mile of him. Innocent grass may conceal snake. Not when you go through it with a fine comb. Avalanche? No, Mr. Fenton's giving his horse a workout first. Well, if I can be of any further service, Mr. Chan. <laughs> Grateful for all kindness, Captain Wade. It's all right. Thirty-eight and four fifths. Not bad. Oh, well, he'll have to do better than that if he's going to beat my horse. Mr. Chester, they bring an avalanche out now. Can I ride him? I wouldn't take a chance, Eddie. Oh, but I can handle him, sir. Honest, I can. I've been able to ride for months now. Some other time. Yeah. Whoa, avalanche! Whoa, steady, boy, steady. Hold him, hold him. What's the matter with that horse? What's the matter with that boy? Why didn't he pull him up? Look out! Look out! Be careful, there. Come on now, boy. Hold him up, boy. They're getting them all excited, Mr. Chester. I think I'd better go over there. Dad, our horse made better time than that yesterday. What do you suppose is wrong? I told the boy to hold him back. What for? Because I don't want to advertise what we've got. The odds will go down. That's a secret. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Interesting contraption, isn't it, Mr. Chan? Excuse ignorance. Uh, may inquire nature of a strange device? Oh, that's part of the latest system for timing the races. Uh, uh, may I explain, please? Well, there's a lamp in here. This directs a beam of light across the track to that little box on the other side, which contains a photoelectric cell. The moment a horse passes through this beam, the cell operates and a picture of the finish of the race is taken up there. In the camera eye booth. Is possible to see, please? Certainly. Come right along. Hello, Al. Hello, Barton. Got a minute? I want you to meet Mr. Chan, Mr. Charlie Chan. Oh, uh, glad to know you. Thank you so much. I've uh, got time to explain the system, Al? Mr. Chan is interested. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, now, to begin with, uh, here's a diagram of the track. At every quarter mile, there's a photoelectric cell. Mr. Barton already explained. Shoot beam of light across track to time horses. That's right. Mm. Say, avalanche is just about to break. Good. I'll turn this on and show you how it works. Now, this light was automatically turned on when he went through the first beam. It also started the timer across the track. He's coming to the first quarter. Now watch this light. 23 flat at the first quarter. Avalanche is sure in form. Now if you stand there beside the cameras, Mr. Chan, and look down toward the track, you'll see that they point directly over the finish line, ready to take a picture. This switch turns on the high-speed movie cameras, and we're now ready to take a picture of the finish. Here he comes. He's over. And now the film we just took is being developed in this high-speed developer. In less than two minutes' time, Mr. Chan, we have taken an actual picture of the finish and sent it down to the judge's stand. That's all there is to it. Perfection of mechanical brain Make Charlie Chan very humble. Thank you so much. Avalanche appear strangely excited. Excuse, please. I've got it! 
One moment, please. You disobey instructions to remain here in room. I wasn't helping any by staying here, so... So you visit racetrack stables? Gee, Pop, how'd you know? Hey, do not grow in hotel. Man who flirt with dynamite sometime fly with angels. Well, I'm not gonna let you take all the chances. Now look, I got in the stable, and when the guard stepped outside for smoke, I took some pieces of cotton and some cleaning solution, too. <laughs> Reveal uh, black dye on forehead of gallant lad, and then white dye on forehead of avalanche? Yeah. And there's a proof. But if they've been switched, how did Gallant Lad come within one second of Avalanche's fastest time this morning? There's a screw loose somewhere. Maybe a loose screw here in test tube. Did you find something, Pop? Managed to secure foam from mouth of excited Avalanche after practice race this morning. Observe. Bubbles prove foam contain very powerful stimulant for heart. Today make masqueraders run very fast to give appearance of champion. I've got it, Pop. It's Chester and Fenton in cahoots to cheat the public. Also possible gambling ring, a cahooting to cheat Chester and Fenton. Yeah, but Pop, what are we doing chasing gamblers? I thought we were after Major Kent's murder. Roots of tree lead in many directions. Ah, oh, gee, Pop, when are we gonna arrest somebody? Are you all right, Pop? Quite all right. Careful now. Man with gun like lightning. Never strike twice in same place. It's sure lucky that curtain went haywire. Correction, please. Use string. So. Arranged simple device to give warning. Observe. When window raised, string trips shade and releases same. Safe now to sleep. Sleep? We've got to do something to stop those birds. Have idea to trap birds. Okay, Pop, let's have it. In morning, you rent Chinese laundry wagon. Disguise self as Chinese laundry boy. Good night. Chinese dick is wise in the whole thing. Now, don't get excited. I know every move Chan's made since he left the track this afternoon. Suppose he phones the cops, tries to pull something tomorrow. That's been taken care of, too. The line to his room has been tapped, and Joe's listening to every call that goes in or out. Suppose you let me handle Chan. Did you get that timing head finished? Yeah, and boy, it works like a charm. Come on, I want to show you. Now, just before the handicap, I replaced the timing head at the three-quarter pole with this phony and loaded with this. So if any other horse is ahead of Gallant Lad, we got nothing to worry about. All right, here we go. Lefty, you pull him through. That ought to stop him. Sure there won't be any slip up. Nah, this isn't gonna be operated from any camera I built. I'm gonna handle it myself. What's happened, Mr. Chester? Another threat left at my hotel. Listen, this is your last chance. Withdraw Avalanche before it's too late. Lansing, they can't intimidate me. I'm running my horse in this race, and I demand protection for him. And you get it. The association has something at stake, too. The confidence of 80,000 people out there who depend on us to protect them from racketeers. Wait. Get hold of every available man. Station them around the track and near the stables. Detail two to guard Mr. Chester. Yes, sir. Mr. Chan in around? I haven't seen him. Then phone him. Tell him to get here as fast as he can. Yes, sir. Let's go to the stables. Have assurance of immediate departure. Thank you so much. How do I look, Pop? What's the matter? Something happened? Mr. Chester received another threatening letter. 
I've been thinking this over, Pop, and I'll bet you that Barton Useless guy... Useless talk like boat without oar. Get no place. Have firecrackers? Oh, you'll be surprised. Correction, please. Hope someone else gets surprised. Come quick. Keep moving and not a word out of either one of you. Get going. Philadelphia can handle two grand and gallon lead at 18 to 1. Take it. Place two grand. Hello, Chicago. What are the odds on gallon lead? Let me know when they're 20 to 1. San Francisco reporting gallon lead at 20 to 1. Grab it. Place 10 grand. Hello, Cincinnati. How much can you handle? Five grand. Oh, so you got him, huh? What do we do with him? In there. We'll take care of him later. Come on. Better put him in there. I'll take care of him. Clever Chinese, huh? Stuck your snoot in the wrong racket this time, didn't you? Abba, you find him guys, they go to Hong Lui Land, you find him, how you want to do that? Hey, what did he say? He say, you're right. Sit down. Chuck, turn on the radio. Here's a news flash that has already swept the grandstand and sent chills and thrills racing through the veins of 80,000 people. We have just learned that another threat has been made against Avalanche, but the owner of today's favorite, in spite of the danger to himself and his horse, refuses to withdraw his entry. And here's more news, ladies and gentlemen, just received. The Chester jockey backs out in the face of danger. Avalanche is now without a rider. I'm sorry, Mr. Chester, but I don't want to take the chance. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Any of you other boys game? Not me. No, sir. Not me. I don't want any part of them. Not today. Gilroy. Yes, sir. If I put one of the other boys up on Gallant Lad, will you ride Avalanche? No, thanks. That's very decent of you, Warren. No, oh, forget it. I just heard about it on the radio, Mr. Chester. I'll ride him for you. Please let me. All right, Eddie. You win this race for me, you'll find $10,000 in your pocket for that specialist you've been wanting to see. Oh, gee, Mr. Chester, thanks. <laughs> it's the most exciting day this track has ever known. For well, there's mystery in the air, ladies and gentlemen, real mystery. And here's some more news. Eddie Brill, and who doesn't remember Eddie when he won the handicap two years ago? Eddie is going to ride the favorite. You know, this uh, may is have making his piece. Thousands sure, and thousands are crowding the betting booths, but the odds on Avalanche are less than even money, but no takers. Golden Fleece is next at three to one, Shrapnel follows at four, and so on down the line. Hold away at ten to one, Moneymaker at ten to one, Cork Jester at twelve, Honey Girl at fifteen to one, and last but not least, Gallant Lad at seventeen to one. But I've just received word that the odds are falling. It's estimated that over a quarter of a million dollars will change hands over the result of this handicap. Money has been waiting for the feature race of the day. If any horse should beat Avalanche, it'll be the biggest turf upset of this meeting. But who can tell? There may be a horse that can beat Avalanche, and many are betting that way. That's what makes horse racing, ladies and gentlemen, and may the best horse win. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost time for the feature race of the day, the Santa Juanita Handicap. The entries are arriving in the receiving barn for the final inspection. With Brill up, Avalanche's odds drop again. Where are you going? Oh, bring Londoli. So sorry, really late. Uh, make a uh, hurry up very quick, please, eh? Huh? Go on, but yeah. take it easy. Need three small minutes at the receiving barn alone. When give signal with hat, Launder Boy must become center of attention. Okay, Pop. Be careful. Just a moment. Have most important business with the Honorable Paddock Judge. You couldn't get in there now if you were first cousin with a favorite. Do not claim relationship with the noble animal. Be 
reason is most urgent. Now listen, I just... Sorry, apologize later. Hey, you! We are coming too soon. I am required. Three-quarter post isn't working. Our phone now. Hello? I'll take care of it right away. Remove dye from head of each horse. Avalanche is avalanche, and gallant lad, gallant lad. Both horses now run under true colors. Why, well, this will force the head of the gambling ring into the open. It'll hit him in his most vital spot. Like Bumblebee in pants. <laughs> Suggest we go to Sadling's door. Out in front, Eddie, and keep him there. Yes, sir. I'll be riding him all the way. Okay, boy. Ballard, hold this horse. Man, most successful. Joe, somebody's double-crossed us. The horses have been switched back again. Oh, you're crazy. No one could do it but that Chinese dick, and he's here. Hey, Frank, see if Chan's still in there. All right, boys, take it easy now. You lose before race start. Come on. Let her bring a party in here, Mr. Chester. Stand back, please. Stand back. Thank you, Wade. Hello, Danny. Hello, Alice. Almost the starting gate. I suppose you're certain Avalanche is going to win. Sure, we've got it all figured out, haven't we, Danny? Oh, absolutely. The wrong horse wins, he loses all his money, I get it, and you marry me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks like a star. Boy is noted. Richardson on Golden Feast is using his whip. He 
He set the pace, but the stamina of his horse is not equal to the terrific speed that Avalanche shows. At the half, Golden Feast and Avalanche are out together with Golden Feast Mary. Avalanche is holding his own with that mighty reserve for which he's famous. Avalanche is forging ahead. He's every bit the horse they promised us, a real favor. Avalanche moves into the lead. Nothing can stop him now. It looks as if he'll establish a track record for the distance. We couldn't believe this horse, Avalanche, was as good as they promised, but he is. He's better. Avalanche is now a length of run. He's got the race in the bag. There's no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. The favor is still in favor at the three quarters. Something's happened. He's lost his train. The deal passes him. the ringleader. Who's been giving you orders? Nobody's been giving us orders. You're lying. Look here. I'll talk to the DA. We'll make it easy on you. That wouldn't do any good. They'd get me just like they got Tip Collins. Tip Collins? That's the guy they fished out of the ocean at Santa Monica this morning. Yes? The police are here now, sir. All right, you can let them come in now. I'll take them down to headquarters, Mr. Lansing. Maybe we can get more out of them there. Come on. Look here, Lansing. I object to being held here like this for no apparent reason. We were rushed off the track so fast, I didn't even have time to collect any of my bets. Won't you be seated, ladies? I'm sorry, but this is at Mr. Chan's request. Then where is Mr. Chan? <laughs> Present. Mr. Chan? Thank you. Uh, happy to report Avalanche and uh, Jockey as Sun Lee would say, hunky dory. Uh, Please to sit down. Warren, did you know that up to 20 minutes before the race, Avalanche was in your stall disguised as Gallant Lad? What? Why, such a thing is impossible. The switch was first made in the boat by Bagley. Then why are we all herded up here like a lot of criminals? Mr. Chan will explain. Have here a large picture. Uh, show finish of race. Observe, please. Dot in shoulder of Avalanche. But where did it come from? Who could have fired it with so many people around? Explanation here in timing head. Also pleased to report, person who fires same, now in custody. But I still don't see what we've got to do with it, Mr. Chan. Perhaps can help uh, solving fresh mystery? Dot, very evident here. Yet strangely absent one moment later when doctor examined Avalanche. All present were first to reach side of noble animal. Someone used cover of excitement to remove Dot. A polite way of telling us we're going to be searched? Uh, have objection? Not the slightest. You won't find it on me, Mr. Chan. <laughs> Please? Also? Well, this is nonsense. Now, wait a minute. Dad, please. We've nothing to worry about. Here it is. Dad! Someone put that in my pocket. I wasn't within six feet of Avalanche. It was you. You were one of the first to reach him because I remember... Just a minute, Fenton. I see this all very clearly now. You wanted to buy Avalanche all along. When I refused to sell, you stole him and substituted your horse. That's not true. Dad only made his offer to protect Avalanche. The whole thing's ridiculous. The whole thing is obvious. You're the only one who would have profited by the exchange. With Avalanche running for you as a ringer at 20 to 1, you'd have cleaned up a fortune. I guess that settles it, Mr. Fenton. You're under arrest. How dare you say that about my father? I'll say more than that. Your father murdered Major Kent, who raised Avalanche, because he would have seen through the switch at once. 
He had to be gotten out of the way. So you struck him down with a windshoe to make it appear that Avalanche kicked him to death. That's a lie! Alice! Pardon, please? How you know windshoe kill honorable major? Why, everyone knew that. The contradiction, please. Only three, beside humble self, knew name of death weapon. Honorable chief of police, most honorable captain of boat, and murderer. You convict self. Thank you so much. It's all very amusing, Mr. Chan, but I think it's carrying a joke a little too far. Cold-blooded murder, no joke. You and Major Kent frequently quarrel because of your gambling losses. Well, what of it? Fearing investigation of same would reveal self as head of gambling ring, you kill Honorable Major on board ship. It isn't true. My husband often quarreled with Dad, but he couldn't have done such a thing. Truth sometimes like stab of a cruel knife. You're very clever, but make mistake. On boat in Honolulu, when you receive threatening letter, have no difficulty reading same without glasses, because content's familiar. But glasses necessary to read very legible timestamp on envelope. Suspected hoax then, so get corroboration later when you need glasses to read fake letter sent by humble self. Next mistake. When avalanche receive cruel dart, you make haste to remove same, fearing evidence point to self. Anticipating search on sudden call to appear here, you put dart in pocket of Mr. Fenton. I think you'll have a little difficulty in proving that idiotic story. Contradiction, please. Proof already in evidence. Blood of unfortunate avalanche. Take away, please. So sorry. Mr. Chan, I have a confession to make. I've already arranged for you to make same to honorable stewards of track. You knew? Too bad you did not expose plot when you first discover switch of horses. Temptation to cash in, most unfortunate. Mr. Lansing, I'll remove my stable from the track at once. I think that's very wise. Wait for me, Dad. I just want to say goodbye to Mr. Chan. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Chan. You've done so much for Dad. <laughs> uh, young man, win money on race? Enough to furnish a four-room flat, I guess. Good wife, best household furniture. Hey, Pop, I've got another hot clue. <laughs> Save for next case, please. Hastings Mystery Theater is produced for the local cable channel in Hastings, Michigan, USA. We are rated as one of the best 100 small towns in America, Hastings, Michigan. Look us up on the internet. Take a look at some of the reasons we are one of the best 100 small towns in America. And maybe you'll see why those of us who live here really like living in Hastings, Michigan. And also, continue to watch Hastings Mystery Theater here on YouTube. Post your comments, like, and subscribe. Thank you.